Okay, hi, I'm, uh, I'm Matt Murray and delighted to be um, hosting the No Room for Racism event. We've got a fantastic panel here, uh, joined by three Wolves, you know, familiar faces. We've got first Jamila Palmer. She's obviously player of the season last season, uh, plays for the, the, the Wolves ladies. She'll be giving us her insight. Uh, we've got Key Jan Herver, who's obviously just joined in, into Wolves from Liverpool, fantastic young player, again, giving us an experience and his unique his unique role to, to joining Wolverhampton Wanderers. And then my former captain, we go back a long way, back to our under 21 days, definitely never short an opinion, proper, proper top combative midfielder, fantastic captain as well, Mr. Carl Henry. So uh, let's get kicking it off, yeah? First and foremost, Carl, I'll, I'll come to you first, Carl. Um, you know, obviously you're a local lad. You play for your local team, uh, local team, living the dream. You know, how, how did it? How did football, you know, happen for you? And you know, where did you ex is um, exactly grow up? Um, so I grew I grew up in uh, Wensfield, um, Ashmore Park, which is uh, not far from from Wolverhampton, uh, from from the town centre at all, which was the town centre back then, now a city centre. Um, and um, yeah, I, I grew up playing football locally. Um, Sunday League, Bushby Boys, um, a couple of local Sunday League teams. Um, and uh, my career started, uh, my parents saw something in the paper that was, uh, it was an academy set up by a former uh, Wolves manager, Sammy Chung. I had my, my, my trial, got into his 30-man squad and um, we played Stoke City um, I, not so long, three or four months later. Um, and, and Stoke City signed me from there. So that's how my career all started. We all started started locally, grassroots, um, and sort of worked my way up. And for you, Jamila, where did you sound like a, a local girl as well? Um, I grew up in Dunstall, so not far from the Molyneux. And then I just, I usually just played football with the boys in the street. And then I got secondary school, had to go to like this naughty, well, I wasn't allowed to go into school, so I was sent with the naughty kids. And this mentor got me into the wolves. And ever since then, I've just started playing. So I was about 14, 14, 13, when my, well, career, I really took part seriously. Uh, and for you, Key, obviously slightly different, not not quite so close to, to Wolverhampton. How, you know, what was it like for you growing up? And did you grow up in a, a diverse community? Um, yeah, I grew up in Amsterdam. So, um, yeah, busy city as well. And um, I started football when I was four. And then when I was eight, uh, I went to Ajax and um, basically played there half of my life till I was 16. And then um, went to Liverpool. Yeah, I'm uh, my dad is uh, East Full Suriname. And my mom is just uh, from Holland. So that makes me like a mix. So I'm 50% of that and uh, the other half is just Dutch. And, and how was it being in such a diverse community, uh, Key? What, what, what was that like? Do you think it was beneficial growing up? And did you experience any racism at all? Mm, I think in Amsterdam, it's, it's, it's not that bad. Like maybe in other uh, countries or cities, because uh, you have from everything something. So you not only have Suriname people, you also have uh, people from Africa, people from North Africa, Asian just basically all around the world. And in Amsterdam, you really don't see really racism, to be honest. You don't really see it. And for you, Carl, did you grow up in a diverse community, friends from all walks of life? And how did that impact your upbringing? Um, well, I, my mom and dad split up when I was younger and um, I moved from a, um, an area called Penderford, um, that was that had a large black community to Wensfield um, and Ashmore Park that that didn't have such a lot such a, a, a huge black community. So um, it was very it, that that was different. Um, and I think for me and my sister experiencing, um, I think seeing the way things were in Penderford, it was you know things were different. Um, and I think you, we saw a cultural difference, um, and we experienced racism when we moved to, to Ashmore Park um, growing up. And, and it, was, it was never nice. Um, and it was something that my, my mom sort of taught us to deal with. We realized we were, we were different. Um, but I think 
um, I think experiencing those the, the two different areas, I think has certainly helped both me and my sister um, and given us a, a, a different perspective, I think. Um, and, you know, we, we grew up, as I said, in a predominantly black area, part of Wolverhampton um, in Penderford. Um, and going and moving away and moving to, to Ashma Park, where it was predominantly white, um, we obviously stood out and we had to, we had, there were challenges that we faced and things, we, you know, name calling, there were things that we, we had to deal with. Um, and, you know, I, I feel that's certainly prepared me for life um, and, and sort of made me stronger. So how, how did that make you feel when you were called these names? And also you said your, your mum taught you how to deal with it. What, you know, what, what advice did she give you? I mean, it's, it's things, you know, you, you get called black this and, and, and black that. Um, and they're horrible things to, um, to hear, to experience. Um, and when you live in a predominantly black area, if you're, if you're black and you live in a black area, it's, you know, you're not, you don't stand out. Um, it's the norm you all of a sudden go to a different area and um, uh, with, with, as I said, with a small black community, very small black community, and um, I'm the one who stands out and, and all of a sudden, you know, it becomes very evident and clear that there aren't many, uh, many people around in my school with my skin colour. So, um, you know, my mum made that clear to me that, look, people will recognise you. Um, think, you know, certain things like if, you, if you're going out and, and getting into trouble, make sure you behave. You go out and get into trouble, the one who will stand out will be you. Um, you're easily identified around here. So thing, you know, things like that. But in terms of dealing with racism, my, my mother explained to me that these people are, um, it, it's ignorance. It's nothing other than ignorance. Um, and for a lot of people, it's just, you know, ignorance is a lack of education, isn't it? And I sort of grew to understand that I was living in an area where they hadn't seen many black people. Um, the children hadn't experienced many black or mixed race kids. Um, and their view was that I was very different. Um, and, you know, I'm sure a lot of those kids now who have grown up have probably experienced other cultures um, and probably are probably very ashamed of their, their behavior. It was never horrendous for me. I had the odd, the odd name, um, names called and, and um, you know, I received some abuse, but uh, I think, thank God I was, I was good at football um, and, and that certainly helped. And for you, Jamila, did you ever experience anything growing up? And, you know, and if so, how did it make you feel? I grew up in a quite diverse community. Like, I grew up with different colours, playing football, different people. So I didn't have, a, like, a really bad ring up where I got called names. For you, Key, in the rival league games, what would you see then? What, what would happen in those games? Like, to be honest, I, I was never, like, the... I was always, like, the, the light skin on the team. I was, there were black people on the team. And of course, then it's easy for the supporters from away teams always to to shout at them. So I never personally got shouted at like those names. But uh, I remember like when we played Fine North away when we were 15, 14, uh, 15 years old, you know, then after you won or you scored a goal or something, you know, they, they just really shout at you. And, you know, some boys in the team who, who, who has a, uh, they have a dark skin. They just got shouted at, and I mean that, that's so sad to hear that we're even in this day and age, you know, because it wasn't that long ago that you were 14, 15, Obviously, yeah. a little bit long ago that you were that age, Carl. Um, but what would you, uh, you know, what would you say though, Carl, to to any young person that receives, you know, racist comments on or off the pitch? What you know, in, in any walk of life, what what advice would you give to a young person? Um, I think first and foremost is to to report it. Um, if there's an adult, you know, there'll be a teacher, um, somebody there, whoever you can report that to, whoever is the, whether there's a manager, uh, if it's in a store or, you know, if it's on the, the terraces, a steward, go and find somebody and report it because there is no place um, for racism. There's no room for racism. And, and um, it's, it, it, it all comes down to education. Um, the fact that somebody wants to discriminate against you because of your skin colour, you know, that's on them. So, don't feel bad about your skin color. Be proud of who you are and and uh, and, and of your skin color. We're all human. We're all in this together. And unfortunately, for some people, um, they see that as an issue. And 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 I would like to say as well that racism is racism. 
Um, and there are a number of, of people who have a hatred of a certain ethnicity or, or, or people from a certain skin color um, or, or creed or religion. And there are those who, again, I will just say, are, are, are just ignorant. So those, some people who are uneducated um, and, and maybe get annoyed with somebody, you know, we've all been in arguments where you're looking for something to say to somebody. And, you know, we have, we've all had these arguments growing up in school where somebody might say something mean to you. And you, you the first thing you, you want to do is say something mean back. Um, and often we, we see people looking at something. What can I say something? What can I say about that person? And skin colour is something. If you're in an area where, you know, it isn't multicultural, uh, there, it isn't diverse and, and you're a black person, something that people might say, they'll pick out your skin colour because they'll think, they'll think it hurts you. And... It's something that we've got to block out, report, but also recognize that, you know, some of these people are not, they don't necessarily have a hatred for black people or for white people or for whoever it may be. There's a lack of education there. So help them, educate them um, where you can. Um, and it's, it's a horrible thing to experience and to try and stay calm with, but say, try, help people, educate them. And, and, and with you, Key, obviously he's, spoke about your players but did you have to support your teammates as well afterwards did you have to you know sit in the dressing room and put your arm around them or did you just react by beating them you know winning the game and walking yeah around? it was it? it was it was more like 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 the second thing I, I think it wasn't like if the guy was sad about it and he was crying or so of course then we there but most of the times it wasn't the case it was more maybe he was mad as well and then he wanted to show it on the pitch you know and then it's it's such a bad thing that 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 still happens, and even with like kids of fourteen or fifteen, just just because of nothing, basically because of a because of a game at that time, and yeah, it's just uh, it's terrible if you if you think about it. But I think that time we didn't think about it that much because we were still young, you know. Did you ever feel like walking off the pitch at the time, or did that ever never cross your mind? No, no, for me. Uh, even now or if it will happen I will never do that because I will just show them like on the pitch you know and I think that's the best thing you can do and of course report it tell someone but um, no don't let them win like that yeah okay well look that's amazing answering these questions and the detail you've given us all is, is fantastic but we've also engaged with a lot of schools and communities um, so we've got some questions that have come in first from from copy school all some fantastic questions so I'm going to fire a few into you all different questions and again the honesty and the, the depth you're going into is you know so educational for everybody and I think we all agreed that's key so uh, for, so from copy school uh, first question is uh, from Toby Bangham and obviously key you're, you're playing at the moment teams are taking the knee before the game do you agree with this and how strong a statement is that yeah, I think it's a, it's a good thing, but I think it won't it won't like I think it's good to show show the world like we're not okay, like we don't accept it, and also with the with the badge of course on the shirt, like that it's just not something. Uh, yeah, we accept like as footballers, of course, it's an, it doesn't belong in this world, and um, yeah, I think it I think people will learn more about it because they will think like maybe why they do that and then you know they hear something on the tv or us talking now and they will think yeah so what uh what carl also said like educate education and stuff a question from uh from joe state for you carl um when you receive racism has that ever affected your style of play, how you then go and play, made you want to go and tackle or even hide from the ball. Has it ever affected how you felt and, you, you know, your state of mind on the pitch? Um, as, when, when I was younger, um, it did. I think when I, when I was young, I remember, it, as I said, when I moved to, to uh, Ashma Park um, and I remember sort of some of the kids saying things and just, you know, you called, you being called a name. And I remember when I, when I was playing against them, when I was up against them in the playground, I wanted to show them. Um, so it certainly spurred me on. For me, um, I see it as it, it fuels me. You can take it, you know, you can take racism two ways. It can either negatively affect you or positively affect you. Um, and 
I think what is important, um, and, and certainly we're talking about the black community at the moment because that's what's, what's relevant, but for anybody who receives racism, it needs to let it fuel you. Um, you know, it's like I said, understanding why people might be saying these things. If you're doing well at something, if you're excelling, somebody wants to hurt you, somebody wants to bring you down. And if they think calling you a name based on your skin color is gonna, is gonna hurt you, then they'll do it. Um, allow that to fuel you. And that's what I did. I, it, it, any, any kind of criticism, um, any kind of um, abuse that I've received, I've, I've tried to let it fuel me to be better. Do you know what? I'll show them. I'll show them. I'm going to be better. I'll be better than you. I'll be better. I'll, I will, you know, I'm going to help. I'll use this to help me, help me get to where I want to, to be. I want, I want to be a footballer. It's going to help me get there. And fortunately throughout my career, I didn't receive um, much racism. In fact, the only time as a professional was, uh, was once when I was, um, I was on the bench at a young age. We played, I was at, for Stoke City. We played against Burnley. It was um, a way up Burnley. I was on the bench warming up and um, every time I went out, I, I heard monkey noises. Um, and I kind of, the first time I was thought, I, I was shocked. I just thought I, I, I was in a, a bit of disbelief. I went and sat down after warming up. I went out again and I heard it a second time. And that's when I realized that they were actually, they were sort of doing monkey noises, aiming, aiming it at me when I was warming up. I mean, you're only 10 yards away from the fans there. Um, and I thought, this is how, this must be what it's like when you play away. This is what it's like in football. You obviously, wherever you go. And I was only a young lad, as I said at the time, and I expected to experience that everywhere, every away ground I went to. Um, and, you know, for, uh, during a probably 15, 17 year career from that point, I never received it again or not that I heard. So I was, I thought that was going to be the norm and it wasn't. So I've been really fortunate in my career that that's not happened. And I think it's not as prevalent over here um, certainly being aimed at, at, at players. Um, my sister, my family have heard things in the stands uh, when I've, well, I've played from, from away fans, from, from our fans. Uh, when I was at Bolton, we played uh, Aston Villa at Villa Parker and, and my family came to watch the game and they heard things and my sister sort of reported it to the, to, the, uh, to the stewards. She was disgusted with some of the things that she heard. So we know it's there, we know it's prevalent, um, but use it to fuel you it can either negatively affect you or positively affect you make it make it positively affect you i mean it's scary to think that you thought maybe as a young man that might be something you'd expect to hear but then in another way it's good that you know one when your family members heard it they're able to report it to stewards and you, and you didn't experience it too much um but yeah i think there has been an improvement but it's still it's still mad to think that you know we think our game's good but there is still problems um but and, and for you key is a, is a really good question here off uh, joe Bryan. And obviously you're a high profile player yourself. You played for Liverpool, you're now at Wolverhampton Wanderers in the Premier League. And do you think more high profile people should promote racism so that people will listen? Um I think I think it helps more, but I don't think like it's just like um of course, like if if someone I think every big player supports it, you know. I think it's just something that footballers just do in general. I think uh, even the biggest footballers, you know, they they support like the the they they don't support racism. So I think it's I think it's just uh it's difficult than only say like yeah if the bigger players will you know speak about it more then a lot of people would listen would listen more and because. You know, sometimes you also hear about things like in Italy or something that people in Italy, they know what it do, what it means for people. But sometimes you hear stories like, um, you know, with big players there, Lukaku or something, you know, that it just still happens and that it's just the way of like getting people's head in, in, in the game, you know. So I think, yeah, I think it's just difficult than only say like the big players, uh, and I think, as you say, the you know kids, they're, they're the heroes, aren't they? If you play for a for the team, they just love the centre forward. Maybe not the goalkeepers yeah. as much, but they yeah. they love the yeah. they love the strikers, don't yeah. they, Jamila, scoring the goals, and they, they look up to them. But so so for, so for you, there's, there's a question here off uh, Jaden Till, and who was your you know who was your role model? How did you get into women's football? You mentioned a little bit playing with the lads, but were there any role models for you, and maybe any black girls that played when you were growing up that you looked at and thought? 
I really identify with you. No, I'm not really. Like, I had cousins weren't really into football. Some of our models were really my mom. Like, yeah. for a single parent, uh, bringing up three kids on her own, that was like my inspiration to do good in life. Yeah. And everything, my older sisters were doing good. So they were like my second, third inspirations in life. Don't know nothing about football. But before I was a striker, I was a winger. And then I thought I could cross the ball like Yankee. So I did actually try and pretend to be like her at times. Or Ronaldinho. But yeah, we'll just say Rachel, Rachel Yankee, to be fair. And there's a question here, and this is for you, Carl, um, from Bailey Jetton. Um, what do you feel about the movement of Black Lives Matter? Um, oof. Um, I, I think the movement, the movement itself has been fantastic. Um, the movement. And I think like Key said earlier, raising awareness, um, raising awareness of this issue is, is what we all want to do. And the more awareness that's raised, um, I think the more the racists are exposed. Um, and that's what we want to do. We either want to expose those racists or we want to educate them. And we're both, we want to do both. Um, so I think, I think the movement and what's gone on in America, the, the horrific scenes in America has led to a worldwide movement. Um, and I think that has had a hugely positive effect on a lot of people. Um, I, I've done a lot of soul searching over the last few months, asked a lot of questions, spoken to, I've, I've sort of, had, I've spoken to a lot of people, a lot of my friends, asked their thoughts. And, and I think that this has uh, provoked um, a, a reaction and a lot of thought um, for, for people, for companies, for individuals. Um, you know, I, I look on LinkedIn, I see a lot of people changing the way they do things. And, and I think going back to taking the knee, taking the knees is one thing and it raises awareness. So I think it's great to raise awareness. At some stage we need action. Um, and that's where I, I think that maybe with the Black Lives Matter movement, it, it, it's raised awareness, um, but the, the political side of it, the fact that they, they, they're not politically neutral, I have an issue with personally. Um, their, their stance on racism and fighting racism is, is, is exactly what we need. And I think it's given everybody a kick up the backside to make them look at themselves and look at their companies. And, and uh, you know, there are a lot of companies, I think, who probably just didn't realise. There's a lot of ignorance, I think, from all of us. Um, people have not realised that, you know, are, are we disadvantaged? Is it a level playing field? When, when we're, uh, you know, when we're offering people jobs, when we're advertising roles, is there equality for everybody? Is there a, an equality of opportunity within our company, within all these organisations? And I think that that's, I've never seen to this level. I've seen a lot of things that Black Lives Matter have done um, and a lot of movements in the past. This is not the first one, is it, Matty? But I'm sure you'll agree. This is, I've not, I've not seen anything to this level where so many people are looking at themselves. And I think that can only be a good thing. People wanting to take action um, and change things. And, and ultimately we need, that's what, what people are asking for. That's what the black community are asking for. Certainly in this country, equality of opportunity. Um, I don't think anybody wants to be, a, a, be the token black person or the token minority getting a role because of their skin color. I don't think anybody wants that. But I think what everybody does want is equality of opportunity, a level playing field. Are you gonna judge me on my ability to perform rather than my, my skin color? And uh, I think we've taken some giant strides, I think, towards that over the last few months. Um, and I think with, with campaigns like no, no Room for Racism, kick it out with their campaigns as well. Um, you know, I hope we start looking for those solutions. There are two parts to this for me, Matty. One is, one is fighting racism. The other part is um, creating that level playing field um, and the mentality of those who potentially feel oppressed and how they're going to go about it. Um, and I think it's all about, you know, now can we, so we've raised a lot of awareness. Now let's look for solutions. Let's start implementing uh, things that will create that level playing field for everybody. As you say, equality is everybody against racism. I think it's annoys everybody when people say all lives matter. And no, no one's asking for 
you know, black people to be seen more important. It's this one, equality. Everybody wants equality. And as you say, they judge for, judge for your, your ability. And last one from, uh, from, from Coppice School. I'm going to throw this one to you, Key, if that's all right. So Shay Round has asked, obviously you said that there was racist abuse from some of the fans, but I don't believe you've uh, received it from a fellow professional. But if so, what do you think the punishment should be? He should be punished, like a ban for a few games, I think, and maybe a, a fine, something like that, you know, because I think maybe on that, that kind of ways, you know, you stop someone, someone from doing that. But to be honest, I never, I never like really uh, had it in a game. Um, but, you know, again, like, of course, on the pitch, you just want to prove him in that situation just wrong, you know, and um, you know, let him see like what you can do on the pitch. But I think afterwards, if you tell the, you know, the FA or anyone, you know, they they should give a yeah a good ban, like a long ban as well. Jamila, we've got a few questions here from Saint Anne School in Stafford. Uh, these are a bit more generic. If you could swap places with any professional footballer, who would it be and why? Apart from uh-huh. Key. Obviously, <laughs> that's a tough one. Any player, any player, male or female, we'll give you anyone. Can I name retired? You go on, we'll go on then. Go on, K Smith. Yeah, and why is that? Brilliant player, absolutely brilliant player. And plus, she's retired as well. She don't have to live with the aches and pains and aches in her life anymore. <laughs> well, there we go. Talking about retiring. So the, one question for you. How hard, Carl, was it to retire? How hard was it for you? And how have you adjusted to retiring from football? Um, I was just going to say that, Jamila, don't, don't wish it away. Honestly, it's, it, it's your long time retired people tell you. And uh, yeah, for me, for me finishing... Um, I felt like it was the right time um, and I, I reached the point where my legs are, were no longer, <laughs> no longer doing what I wanted them to do. And um, it's a, it, it's a sorry, it, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a sort of sorry state of affairs when uh, the game you love and the game, you know, um, and, and the life as well, the life that you've known for so long um, is no longer. So it's, it's, a, it's, a tough. Um, obviously Matty, you, you did it a lot earlier. And I think, one thing it's made me realise retiring um, is just probably how much empathy I lacked for others who were retiring. Um, I never under until you retire yourself, you don't understand. You don't. I've never understood what people were going through. I, you know, I sort of thought, oh, it's they're, they're all right. They're retired. They've got loads of time now. And um, I think like um, like those coming out of the army um, or those coming out of prison. I think we are institutionalised. Um, in football a lot of us are in the game for so long Key said that they started at eight um, and and I think when you start at such a young age and you're in the system for, from such a 25 years I, I was in the game I started at 11 um, and to finish all that I know everything that you know from going to the doctors from you know you, you want to go, go and see the doctor at the club um, it took me about a year to register at, at, at a doctor's local doctors I didn't even know what to do um and just basic things that people will probably laugh at but it's just things that you just you know you're looked after you're in a system you're looked after you have, you have everything that you need and to go from that to, to almost nothing it's uh it's tough tough to take so um I've, I've tried to embrace it i've got a business um i have a business i've been I've had for nine years so i've thrown myself into that um and my glass is always half full but uh, i must admit it's been it's not been easy retiring um from the game that you love and that you've known all, all of your life. I'm going to finish your view then, Key, and then I'm going to wrap this up. So, look, obviously, you've already been on an unbelievable journey. Played for Ajax, Liverpool, now Wolverhampton Wanderers, fantastic. But what, what for you are the, the worst bits of being a professional footballer? But surely, what, you know, but what, are the, what are the best bits for you? What do you enjoy the most about being a footballer? Basically, what my dad always told me when I was really young was like, you have the opportunity to make from your hobby your work. And that's something really special that because he has a good job as well, but he doesn't like to go to work in the morning. I have the privilege to do that and go and have fun and, you know, and really enjoy my job. But I don't think in general there are really 
bad things about football. I just think the, I think the the world behind football that people don't see, like the things what happens off the pitch, like in the you know the the business side of world in football. Like I, I'm not in that as well, you know. I think racism as well. Like I think that that are the only two things that that you don't control and like not a not fun not fun it's not it's not only about football anymore like so there are a lot of things that come together to make it the whole picture of football but to be honest i can't complain or anything so i'm just uh, happy that i can do this every day and that i'm still uh, so young and a long way to go still yeah enjoy it because it trust me it goes very very quickly yeah. but look you uh, for this no room for racism event you've all been a fantastic panel answered so honestly so you know it's going to be so educating for all these young people listening to it so for Jamila and Key good luck for the rest of the season Carl good luck with the business and uh, keep up all the great work so remember everybody challenge it report it and change it